It all began with a heartbreaking disappointment. Many thousands believed Jesus would return, but he did not. And in the weeks and months that followed, only small, discouraged and scattered groups of Adventists still met. They were ridiculed by neighbours and former friends, and their hopes for the future seemed shattered. But then a small 17-year-old girl stood up and proclaimed that God had given her messages for them. She had little formal education, and her health was in a terrible state. Her name? Ellen Gould Harmon. Later, she would become known by her married name, Ellen G. White. This happened more than 160 years ago in the 1840s. Today, the Christian movement she helped to pioneer is counted in millions around the globe. While God definitely has his true prophets, the Bible portrays a number of false prophets. Our age has witnessed some too. At the extreme, cult leaders have led innocent people into fanaticism and even death. Others may just be deluded, claiming to hear voices from God. Where does Ellen White fit in? Was she well-intended, but delusional and mentally disturbed? Or was she a dangerous cult leader? Was she a fake? or in biblical terms, even a false prophet? Or could it be, as she herself claimed, that she actually was a messenger sent by God? Dr. Graham Bradford, a senior lecturer at Avondale College, has studied these issues for many years. He has taught in the classroom and at seminars throughout Australia and the Pacific, as well as in the United States and Europe. Alan White is coming under a lot of crossfire these days. The internet contains a large number of websites which are critical of her. They are raising many questions which call for explanation and understanding. Isn't it true that she and her husband didn't get on too well? Didn't she claim to speak to her dead husband James after his death? Didn't she put a lot of other people's ideas into her writings? Didn't she change her mind on some of the subjects in the Bible? Didn't she predict that some of those living in her time would experience the second coming of Jesus? If she is a messenger from the Lord, how can she ever be wrong on anything? Some of the criticism is simply unfounded. Alan White never claimed to have spoken with her deceased husband, for example. But the accusations should be addressed objectively. She was certainly human and had her faults. Yet what is often overlooked is that God in biblical times also spoke through imperfect human beings. They were people just like us, but with a very special God-ordained task. Despite their humanity, God worked through them. Their humanity is no reason to lay aside their special messages from God. In this DVD, we will look at the human side of biblical prophets and inspiration. Our investigation will take the Bible as our model. On a basis of the Word of God, what can we expect from someone claiming to be a messenger sent by God? Only as we do this can we say that we have dealt fairly with Ellen G. White. Ellen White's ministry continued for 70 years beyond her first vision. Her calling to the prophetic office was not just a flimsy notion. Through a long and fruitful life, she maintained her integrity. Was Ellen White a fake or a fraud? Is there any reason to question her basic honesty and integrity as a Christian? If you look at the lives of the prophets, you can see how difficult it was for them to do their work. Who would like the job? What did Israel do to their prophets? They gave them a hard time. Sometimes they were stoned and they certainly got a lot of criticism. Ellen White brought messages that were at times unpopular and unpleasant. She once said that she would rather die than receive more messages. Yet people close to her and many who had received tough personal messages believed that she had the gift of prophecy. It is pretty hard to keep up a pretense for over 70 years. 
So what are some of the reasons that they accepted her as a genuine messenger from God? I think that they felt the power of her ministry because she always uplifted Jesus Christ and never, like some cult prophets, pointed to herself or made other people dependent upon her. Lift up Jesus, you that teach the people. Lift him up in sermon, in song, in prayer. Let all your powers be directed to pointing souls, confused, bewildered, lost, to the Lamb of God. Lift him up, the risen Savior, and say to all who hear, Come to him who hath loved us and hath given himself for us. Let the science of salvation be the burden of every sermon, the theme of every song. Let it be poured forth in every supplication. Bring nothing into your preaching to supplement Christ, the wisdom and power of God. Hold forth the word of life, presenting Jesus as the hope of the penitent and the stronghold of every believer. Reveal the way of peace to the troubled and the despondent, and show forth the grace and completeness of the Savior. She also helped to make their prophetic hope Christ-centered. They expected the end of the world, and they were concerned about the time of trouble to come. Speculations in end-time scenarios often create very peculiar reactions. Without the guidance of Ellen White, they could have easily been swept away by fanaticism and crazy speculations. Let Daniel speak. Let the Revelation speak and tell what is truth. But whatever phase of the subject is presented, uplift Jesus as the center of all hope, the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. She taught them to study and trust the Bible, not to depend on her writings. She saw herself as the small light, as the moon only reflecting the light of the sun, the Holy Scriptures. But God will have a people upon the earth to maintain the Bible, and the Bible only, as the standard of all doctrines and the basis of all reforms. She also gave them a breadth and a depth of mission, and inspired them to go into the whole world, preaching the gospel, educating and helping human beings in need. Due largely to her inspiration and influence, the Seventh-day Adventist Church today operates hospitals and medical clinics and educational institutions all over the world. They often experienced that she had knowledge of what went on in people's lives. She wrote letters to individuals, revealed secrets, and brought guidance, encouragement, and hope. Generally speaking, when they followed her counsels, they seemed to prosper. On the other hand, when they went against her counsel, things didn't work out very well. Preacher and radio evangelist HMS Richards heard Ellen White preach and recounts his experience. Yes, I knew Sister White in this way. I heard her preach once and saw her, of course. It was in Boulder, Colorado, at the camp meeting in 1909 in a building with an iron roof right at the base of the Red Rocks there. It's on the campus of the University of Colorado. And uh, she was there, I suppose there were 200 Adventists and maybe uh, the rest of a thousand people or 800 people were just the people of the town, people of various denominations that wanted to see the Adventist prophet. I can remember when she came on the grounds in a surrey drawn by two horses and Willie White, her son, was with her, and Miss McIntyre, her companion and nurse. And the meeting that night, she preached to us. I was sitting at her left hand, about, oh, 15 feet from her. could see her plainly, of course, right there. Platform was about a foot, foot and a half high. And she had this big, thick Bible. She was preaching faithfully, giving God's message. And uh, I, I was interested. It was interesting. She was just a dear, sweet Christian mother or grandmother telling us what we ought to do. Just as she started to talk to finish off, it started to rain on that iron roof, and you can imagine. Now, remember, no amplifiers in those days, except you carried your amplifier with you. And she's had a regular preaching voice, and you know, from this from this conversational tone or voice that she'd been using, she went into her real preaching voice. And you could hear her voice just like a silver bell right through all of that 
confusion caused by that rain. She could talk right through the rain noise. And then she talked just about a minute, and then she kneeled down to pray. She told her son, I must pray for us. And she came over on my side of the platform and kneeled down to pray. I can hear her now. She said, not our father, but oh, my father. And from that moment on, it was a personal communion between her and the Heavenly Father. In just a minute or two, there seemed to be a mighty power come over that meeting. And I felt it. I was just a, just a boy. and I was a member of the church. I'd been baptized about a year and a half before. And I could feel that power until finally I, I was afraid to look up for fear I'd see God standing right there by. She was talking with him. She'd forgotten all about us. And she was in the presence of the Lord. And a minute or two more went by, and that whole crowd, you could hear them weeping, crying over their sin. A tremendous revival, really. Spiritual revival, that mighty power of God. When she preached, God blessed her as a preacher. But when she began to pray, he honored her as his prophet before the people. I'll never forget it. One of the most impressive and lasting testimonies that Ellen White was genuine is the fact that those people who live closest to her came to trust her as a messenger of the Lord. There are many good reasons why these contemporaries believe that Ellen G. White had the gift of prophecy. Yet there are many more important questions that need to be answered. Many of these stem from a fundamental misunderstanding of the role she claimed for herself and what the Bible teaches us regarding how the prophetic gift should function. In our next section, we will therefore raise the question, what is the purpose of Ellen White's ministry? How does she describe it herself? And is it in line with the Bible?